I, I think you may have met them before, but um, Felicia and Chris is a, a Beth, and uh, they're going to be filming you guys uh, with, for the TV program. You want to be a chef. And uh, we talked last week, and one of the things we want to try to achieve with this segment is to feature you guys, the students. The class um, so far, if you uh, have been here each day, is pretty rigorous. I think um, uh, one of our important goals is to try to develop confidence with you. Uh, with the student, and I see that already forming. We had um, probably the best first week I've realized here in years. Hi, I'm Bruce Kanawal, Director of Culinary Arts for Schoolcraft College. Our program is known nationally and internationally. What you're about to, what see, you're about to see is a behind the scenes look at our culinary arts program. So you want to be a chef? This is one of the classes in our curriculum that's almost totally hands-on. We have a dissertation for about 40 minutes each morning where we go over the menu. We have a pureed soup. Uh, the base of the soup is potato. We want to cook the uh, ham hocks to extract the flavor and have a wonderful smoky flavor in this uh, potato soup. Pretty much the whole day it's fast and furious cooking. They, we have um, four hours to prepare everything uh, for the restaurant. We're the only restaurant in town that serves 60 to 80 covers a day with a complete menu change each day. Everything fresh, uh, nothing processed or pre-made. They make everything. This uh, chard is actually going into a puree of potato, Swiss, Swiss chard, and um, ham soup. So we're actually making the soup. This is a soup station. So what we're doing is we're cooking the potato separately, and then we will cook the, the chard separately, mostly focusing on using the stems to give it a little bit more body. And we'll add that to the soup component before we puree it. And we have the ham hocks cooking right now, and they need to cook about three hours. And then we'll use some of that, that broth that will go in with the potato mixture and then the chard. And that'll be our soup. These, you want to cool them off, so... Look at the... Uh amount of meat is not that much. You're going to get a little more than that out of each one. The skin, take them off and reserve the skin. Give it to Jeffrey. If you read in, in, in uh, classical cooking, in a scoffier, when he makes espanol or brown sauce, he'll cook out smoked ham skins in that espanol. So we'll do that with our batch of demi and give it a little nice smoky edge. All right, but then you want to pull all the meat once it's cooled off and mince it. And if you be careful of any um, small pieces of bone from the shank or heavy gristle. This, strain it into your soup now. Do you have a china cap or a...
And the bones, we just toss. We don't see the bones in pocket. We've already got everything out of there that we're gonna get. You know. Okay. All right. Well, the key objective is to give the student experience working in a, a restaurant. A lot of our students uh, come to us with some level of experience, but, but some really don't have um, what I would call streetwise experience working in a restaurant. So here for a five-week rotation, they have opportunity to, to work on different stations, and, and, uh, which essentially um, uh, they, they do batch cookery items, and they do a setup for cooking things to order on each station. Um, they work on five stations, uh, the soup and sauce station, the saute, the entremetier, or the vegetable and fry station, uh, the roast and grill station, and the cold food kitchen, which we refer to as garmage. I have always wanted to be a chef, and I had already been in college and undergraduate school when I even found out that that was a possibility. I met someone in New York, I'm from New York, a taxi driver who had just started going to the newly opened French Culinary Institute, which opened in the 80s in the city. And he said he was going to be a cook, and I said, you could do that? That was a real option? But I was already in college and you know, on my path, and any time I had ever hit a place in my other careers where I was unhappy, I said, I should just cook, I should just cook, I should just cook. And then different people and choices and opportunities, and then I got married and had children and made other decisions to support my husband and my family. Once I realized that I could change my life and make it happen, and I put the question to my husband and I said, can we scale down and I could be around more, I could support you more differently than we do it now and it worked out and the minute and I gave myself two years to be cooking or teaching full-time and within three months I had my own personal chef business I was enrolled here at school and it, I was doing it full-time in just a few months right after the decision was made. Well Nick's an awesome student. She's uh, I, I believe formerly uh, worked in marketing and television I uh, spotted her right away uh, in the dining room last year. She was so interested and so gregarious and outgoing and uh, just exudes energy. And, and she, she generated enthusiasm among the other students. Uh, Nick, Nick is a shining light in our culinary program. What kind of pan am I doing this final, adding the liaison? Small saute pan. pan. Small saute? Yeah. And, and it's interesting today, I don't know how many of the students even set up their station because you know how I go behind them, yeah. do this, do that, so they're going to find out that service time, it could be disheartening. So, and, and it has to all be set up, I mean you have to set it up for lunch up, as well. Yeah, and you don't have to physically go get everything. We have a kitchen proctor, so. And they can help with all that. Yeah, MJ, okay. got a minute? Um, can you, can you, um, each station needs to have uh, saute pans with lids and, uh, and, and a full small equipment. Uh, can you let me know which stations don't and would you mind to just set them up? Yeah. Let me know which ones don't. Which and don't have pans? Don't, they're not set up for service, yeah. Okay. And then, then I need uh, also to ask you to get a couple uh, Teflon egg pans and have them on garmage with a small amount of clarified butter. I'm sorry. Skip it. No. Okay, skip that. We need pythons for that. We need pythons for that. I think Emily's taking care of that. Okay. Thanks. All right. I caught, boy, I, I caught myself I in an Alzheimer's moment. You may have seen her on uh, Elton Brown's television show. Uh, she won a kitchen makeover and produced a video and an essay to the TV station on why she deserved the kitchen makeover. Hi, welcome to my kitchen. This is the kitchen we do courtesy Food Network and Alton Brown, my new hero. And it basically took care of everything from this wall all the way back into another room, complete redo. I used to have a bathroom toilet right here and they gave me a beautiful big refrigerator so I can store a lot more food. 
And now I have a prep sink also over here so that I can get more work done. It makes the space much more usable. If you come over here, this is one of my favorite things. I have two wall ovens and a warming and proofing drawer so that I can cook an enormous amount of food simultaneously. And then down here is one of my other favorite features. I don't have to use up any counter space while I'm cooking all these other things. I can mix batter or dough anytime I want. And it's easy to put away. My children can use this. And then over here, one of the issues in my old kitchen was that I couldn't use any corner space. I had a lot of dead end space. So I got a nice little Lazy Susan here, which uses up all that space in there. I also have a five burner stove. I only had four before. And the one extra burner really makes all the difference in the world, because I can have a lot of pots going and just keep moving. Down here, I have a new office. And this space used to be kind of a mud room, but not really used as a mud room with a shelf and a couple little shelves that I put in here. But I got a whole new office. I have some space for my cookbooks, and I probably need some more space or have to do some editing. And I have a pantry. And a nice thing is to have the microwave in here, because I really hardly ever use it, and it's not taking up any space in the kitchen. I want to eat a puree of soup and uh, add some of that stock from the uh, after we puree And we'll worry about the hacks later, but let's get this. Just some stock, half the stock? Well, we'll use it in there, all of it eventually, but um, you can pour half off to give you some, some element of taste in the soup. Okay. Make sure that the soup warmer's on every day, yep. soup cups are in there, yep. that you have the proper size inserts. Uh, um, you're stepping. Um, we're always uh, going to keep the backup in the steam table, so I make sure the steam table's on there. And I want you guys to set up that soup station every day at 1045. So just looking at the clock, I would hook up the beer mixer. Do you guys know how to disassemble that and assemble it? Uh, I have done it for the kitchen model, but... There's a, there's a key here, Chris. Um, it's all together now. When you go to disassemble it, if you have any problem figuring it out, call me. But I want you guys to disassemble it when you're done, wash it, rinse it, and sanitize it, reassemble it before you hang it off. So you would like us to use the burn mixer on this? Yeah. Just yeah. I want you to just, you got your soup in a five gallon pot or a rondo. Um, here. Okay. Bring this over. <laughs> Press the button on top? Yeah, I did. Chris, to his credit, came in last year and asked, uh, could he observe in my class? Could he help out? Could he uh, 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 carry you know, hundreds of pounds of roasted bones to the stock pot and learn to make the stock. So, so he invested, he invested uh, early on with extra effort uh, uh, in a path of discovery to, uh, to, to, you know, make it easier. He came into the class and he did well, but he had a, a familiarization with, with the whole process uh, because he was uh, inquisitive and hard working early on. Restaurant operations, you know, it's the backbone of every restaurant. Um, you think the guys on the line at, the, you know, at, at night cooking up, you know, 40 steaks to order or whatever to order, you think they're the ones that are really stressed out, which they are, granted, they are. But it's actually the morning crew uh, that can be, it's pretty stressful because you have a certain time limit to get all these long, arduous projects done uh, to make a perfect sauce doesn't take 20 minutes, you know. Um, so you have a, well, it seems like a long time, but it's actually strained because uh, actual, the, all the processes or steps that go into it. So it is, a, it is a stressful class, but it's definitely a good one to have because you learn how to focus that stress into just becoming quicker and more efficient. So, you know, it's, it's, it's definitely a, a focused stress. 
I would like to ask uh, Michael to go first on Tuesday with the Gujanats of Dover Soul Judic style. And I believe there is a photo of this dish uh, somewhere on the, on, the, on the log. I'd like you to, before you leave, try and uh, scan through that with uh, Jeff or Laura and find the photo. And I want to verbally give you some coaching as this is a new item. Well, in week five, they are given an assignment. Uh, they, it's a draw, and they all get to draw an entree. And, and uh, now a student single-handedly sets up an entire station by themselves. potato dish is a potato gratin with a celery egg. That is in the oven in the back as well. So right now I have to work on uh, mashed potatoes. It's the uh, second uh, starch compartment in my dish. So I'm just getting ready for that. And after that, at about 10.30, I'm going to work on the sauce. It's a beer blanc. And I should start to be wrapping things up. So I'm looking good. Looking good. Should be. A pretty good week because, um, uh, you know, I'm really not going to scare them. Their biggest fear is that they might be embarrassed in front of their uh, uh, peers. And if they're not done on time, you know, it's their reputation in the class. And, uh, and so, you know, I try to coax them along, be conscious of that reputation. Uh, but, but that motivation, they have their motivation. They don't want to be late. It's embarrassing. The afternoon class is there. They don't have their stuff. Um, you know, so. Just got like one or two more things I gotta finish up, and then I can uh, start cooking a dish. Actually, I wish I had about, I'd say about 10 more minutes, but I know, no big deal. It's the way it works. You did a good job today. All right, so Thank relax. You. Try not to pay attention to these uh, cameras, all right? Oh, they don't bother me. All right. Um, <clears throat> well, let's take a look at the dish first in terms of appearance, all right? Um, the fish looks nicely cooked. You, you want to you always try and achieve this level of brownness that you have on this one. So, uh, But I think Dover so is a delicate fish and it shouldn't be overcooked. If it overcooks, it gets tough and draws up and becomes chewy. Um, lemon sole is not like that. Gray sole isn't like that. Just Dover. Atlantic sole. Dover sole, it's a tough, gnarly fish and it, it, um, it gets tough like lobster. The artichokes look good. I'm worried maybe we could have came down another layer on the, on the leaves, but they look Nicely cooked, and the one I tasted earlier, the endive looks great. The amount of garnish looks perfect. Um, the sauce. This one sat in the window just a little bit, so it started to dry up there because of that. But um, your gratins looked uh, nice. I'm hoping they're they're tender. They are. If they, or if they taste as good as they look, uh, we're gonna have a great day. All right. So what I'm gonna do is. <clears throat> take a clean uh, four each taste and I want you to uh, uh, taste it with me and not show me your scores and we're going to separately score 
uh, how we think it tastes. Before we do that, in terms of um, working in the kitchen, um, in, in, in cleanliness and order, organization, how, how do you think you did today? Um, I went on a five, something like that. Uh, yeah. And I, think, I think it started off well, and uh, towards, towards the end I started to get kind of panicky. Um, I think I just kind of ran out of time. I was pushing it to the level, I guess. I, 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 I should have done a lot better than I did. That's what I think. Well, I think you did well, but I think your assessment's right on. You were, you were, you were very strong in the morning, and uh, you, Michael, this is normal. You've got all the classmates watching you. Uh, Chef Dan with his uh, clipboard of, of uh, death and destruction, you know. There's a lot of pressure on you, but um, and the class does run class. Teaching the class, I've had the same experience that you did this morning or overall with the whole class. So the more you do it, uh, the better you'll get in terms of the timing issue and, and knowing where you're at. But all of a sudden I feel like, well, everything's going great, um, timing's perfect, and then, and then in the next moment it's like, ah, you know, we're, so the clock, the clock keeps running, and uh, I think you hit a, a, a good self-assessment in there. Um, you want to always strive to work uh, clean in the kitchen. And, and from where you were five weeks ago, there's been a, a dramatic improvement. You've gone from your step A to your step uh, uh, B for sure. But I want you to keep going on that, and, and I think you realize that it's a, it's a matter of experience, timing, confidence, that the, and, and the more you gain skills, uh, the more proficient you become at, at executing those skills. So okay. you're doing great. Um, uh, you've been a great student. So let's taste it, and we'll take a clean utensil each time so that uh, so we don't spread germs. It's important to to realize that students are people, and they're all different. And um, if you if you um, allow yourself to be open and non-judgmental with these uh, people, you, you can't judge a book by its cover. And uh, so it has to be a non-threatening, fair environment for the student. And if you reinforce principles of learning in a in a fair way. And as opposed to punitive teaching, where you're pounding on them for everything they're doing wrong, uh, they start to develop confidence. They, they uh, start to feel like it's all right to be me and I'm in this cooking environment. And, uh, and that, that's a beautiful part of teaching. That's, uh, I guess if we feel any connection there, it's, it's because of that. He's always got my respect because he doesn't treat you so that you're just like a servant here to pop, you know, pop out the work. You're just here to learn and learn it from people that have been through all of this. And uh, I'll tell you, if you can put a story with every dish you put out, then I think you've made, you've made it. You know? He's been doing it for nearly, not 40 years, but definitely 25, 30 years of cooking and a varied experience in different restaurants, and he is a master chef, and, but he's very patient, and he's very good at um, if you're doing something not quite right. Um, he'll come in and ask if he can help show you how to do it correctly, which is uh, very, very nice. He not only makes you want to be a better cook, he makes you want to be a better person, and that is such a gift among chefs, to hold yourself so well and to teach you all kinds of skills besides cooking skills as well. He really is all about having a really professional kitchen and that's more than just cooking. Oh, he's great. He's, he's, a lot of, all the chefs here are very nice and respectful and they, they know you're going through other stuff too and they understand what some stuff and they're, they're all really great and kind and they do have fun and joke around with us so it's, it makes it a lot easier, so nice. You got a camera on you all the time now, huh? No. Uh, just today. I'm on probation. 
<laughs> I thought it was like a new reality show or something. It is. <laughs> it is. Really? Yeah, it's um, on, on Channel 8 in the Bone there, so you want to be a chef. Ah. They, just, they, they actually are filming each class, so. Uh, this, this is for a roast. How's it going today? It's going well. This is our first day of the week. I've been running, running since 6.30. Uh, it's it's Monday for them. You know? Is that parsley? I don't know if they drink beer this weekend or they they're 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 doing that chef's gone wild video, but anyway I gotta pull up the slack and things are looking pretty good. We'll make it. They're a little sleepy, but would you order that in a restaurant? I want you guys to just film this, say, oh, he's a nice guy, he's giving him kudos. It really is good. <laughs> you don't want to be accused of that, do you? No way. You want to, you want to feel like you earned your stripes, you know?